Hi, this is Sharan. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see about how to fail in a data science interview. You might be thinking why it is important to know about how to fail rather than focusing on how to succeed. It is important. Each and every one of us have a lot of failures. Having failure is good. But what is important is, are we learning from those failures? It is important to learn from our failures. We need to understand what didn't work in the past. What can we change to ensure that we can succeed in the future? Similarly, there is a lot of data science opportunities out there. All of you might not succeed in each and every data science interview that you are going to attend. There will be a lot of failures, but it is important to understand from those failures. And hence, in this video, what we are going to see is we are going to see some of the common areas where a lot of people fail in a data science interview. So we can avoid them. Maybe you can avoid them in your next interview. So let's get into the video and then see some of the common areas where many people fail. The first most important factor where many people fail in a data science interview is the buzzwords. It is very tempting for a lot of us to use buzzwords in our resumes, especially in data science. There is no shortage for buzzwords. There are a lot of algorithms, a lot of techniques, a lot of methodologies. And hence, it is very tempting for all of us to use a lot of buzzwords into the resume. But what is important is how much do we know about those buzzwords? How much do we know about those techniques or those methodologies? What I would recommend is include the buzzwords in your resume only if you have experience using it. Because as a recruiter, it is very easy to differentiate people who knows about the concepts and who doesn't know about the concepts. Some of you might be thinking about like using the buzzwords and then maybe spending few minutes to learn about those before the interview, but that is not enough. It is very easy to identify that you don't know about it in detail. So use it only if you have experience using it. If you want to include some buzzwords, spend some time, learn about it, implement it, get some experience and then include it in your resume. So there shouldn't be any buzzwords or any keywords that you are not aware of. So having these buzz buzzwords in your resume will tempt the interviewer to ask more questions about it. And it is important for you to be really thorough about it. A lot of people might be thinking it is really, it is important to have a lot of keywords in their resume in order to make sure the resume is shortlisted. But the truth is, even if you have very few keywords, very few buzzwords, if you know exactly about them, if you know about all those concepts thoroughly, that is good enough to ensure a success in your interview. The second important factor. Many people think that calling a particular package, calling a particular algorithm is equivalent to knowing the algorithm. It is not. It is important for you to understand the algorithm thoroughly. If you are going for an interview, it is not enough that you can make use of a function to call an algorithm like linear regression, random forest and use it on a particular data set. It is not enough. It is important for you to understand what the algorithm is doing. What are all the basic concepts? For example, if you are going to implement a linear regression algorithm, it is important for you to understand how the regression line is being generated, how the algorithm actually helps you in making the prediction. What is logistic regression? What is the sigmoid function in logistic regression? How it helps in making sure you are able to predict the results accurately. Also, what is a decision tree? What is a random forest? Why having 50 small trees is much better than having one large decision tree? What are all the benefits of random forest? How it helps in improving the accuracy of the model? What is a clustering algorithm? What are all the different types of clustering algorithm? What is K, the number of clusters in a clustering algorithm? What kind of methodology is used to identify K in a clustering algorithm? So it is important for you to understand about the algorithm. So it is not enough that you know how to call a particular package or how to call a particular algorithm. What is important is whatever algorithm that you have used, whatever algorithm that you have mentioned in your resume, you need to know how it functions, what are all the basics of it, what are all the various concepts around it. For example, if it is a decision tree, you need to know various keywords such as what is an root node, what is an leaf node, what is an branch, what is an parent and child node, how various decision nodes are being formed, what are all the various examples of a decision tree algorithm such as ID3 and so on. So whatever algorithm that you are going to use or you are going to put in your resume, you need to know about all of it, how it works, what is the mathematical concepts behind it. So even if you use very few algorithms, 
that should be enough it is not it is not like you need to have a lot of algorithm names in your resume even if it is very few if you know them thoroughly if you can spit about it like for 5 minutes or 10 minutes that will be really amazing rather than having let's say 10 different algorithms in your resume the third important point data science is not equal to just model building many people assume that data science is just about the model building and then whenever an question is being asked they focus so much on the model building like what type of algorithm to use and how much time they spend in tweaking the parameters and so on what is important is to understand that data science is only 20% about the model building about 80% of the time you spend in like finding the source data collecting the various source data working on the data like doing the various analysis data handling what are all the various issues that is found in the data like uh, uh, like noise or missing data or having some kind of dummy values how do you handle all those issues what type of techniques can be used to solve different data issues what are all the different data analysis that can be done in order to better understand about the data for what type of data what type of algorithms can be used so it is important for you to understand that data science is not just about the model building so when you have been asked a question don't focus too much about just the algorithm like how did you come up with an uh, with an algorithm what like how did you tweak various parameters what did you do in order to ensure that the model is working best what is important is to understand that a lot of focus is also being done outside of the model building how did you ensure that you improve the data set in order to make the predictions much better what are all the various steps that you were able to do it that will create a huge positive impact on your interviewer so appreciate the other steps and learn about it because the model is the last part anyone can call a particular model and then implement the prediction but what is important is how we are able to translate the data to ensure that the quality of the data is improved and hence the prediction can improve so how much time we invest on analyzing the data on improving the data set is really important it, it's directly correlated to how well the output is the fourth area is lack of clarity on the basic concepts if you are not able to answer a question related to a basic concepts let's say you have been performing really good in the interview you were able to answer so many questions your projects everything but you were not able to explain a simple concept that is enough to make sure that you fail some of the basic concepts questions are like what is unsupervised learning what is an unsupervised learning what are all the different types of algorithms out there what do you do when your data set is having a lot of missing data what happens when there is a lot of noise data what are all the different metrics that are used in order to measure the accuracy of your model and what it is like what is precision what is recall when precision and recall is used what is an overfit what is an underfit what does overfit means how do you solve the problem of overfit what is regularization what are all the different types of regularization what is an ensemble model what are all the different methodology or techniques that are used for building an ensemble model like what is batting what is boosting what are all the different algorithms for example random forest is a typical example for batting so you must be able to understand and explain all these basic concepts if you are not able to explain a basic concept even if it is just one question and if you are not able to explain it to the best of your knowledge it is enough for the recruiter to reject you make sure that you focus on all the basic concepts and you are good in all those basic concepts the next one is inability to explain a data science problem in business terms as a data scientist one of your key role is to translate the business problem into a data science solution so it is important for you to understand both the data science techniques as well as the business problem so how do you understand the business problem so if you are having asked a question about a problem that you have solved you need to explain it both technically as well as in business terms like what was the business problem how did you ensure that the bias have been removed what helped you in understanding the business problem from all different angles what was the key issue in the business problem how did it affect the business what was the magnitude of those impact and finally what kind of data science solutions can help in solving those problems so it is important for you to understand both the technical aspects from data science point of view as well as the business aspects like how you are able to understand the problem and you, how you are able to use the data science techniques in order to solve it the next area is having lack of clarity about your work 
you might be thinking that if you have done some work you would not in and out of it but sometimes in interview it is it is very common for us to miss certain certain things about the project that we have worked on so when someone is asking when the interview interviewer is asking you a question about a project or about a work that you have worked on it is important for you to explain like in complete the explain the complete picture so what was the problem what were the various issues that came up when you were trying to solve the data science problem what worked and what did not work it is very easy for many of us to forget about what things did not work what were the issues that were faced but it is in, it is important for you to remember all these key things and put it forward during an interview because that creates a lot of positive impact also some details about how many people worked on a project what was your role how did you ensure that ensure the success of the particular project so that's time when you have been asked a question about the project that you are working on try to make sure that you have notes about various issues faced what worked what did not worked how were you able to improve the overall solution or like how were you able to improve the prediction results what different techniques that you that you tried and what worked what was the learning from those data science problem so all these are very important so before next interview make sure that for all the projects that you have mentioned in your resume you have the complete picture like what was the journey of uh, the execution of the project what worked what did not worked and uh, that will create a huge positive impact and the final one is not knowing enough about the project or about the company that you are applying for a lot of people focus so much on our resume and we forget about the company or the project where we are applying for or the role that we are applying for it is equally important to focus on the role that you are applying for to understand what type of skills are being expected what is the actual job role how you were experienced and ensure that you can succeed in the new role apart from all these things it will be really good if you are if you can able to read about the com- the blog of those companies what are all the different projects is there any news article about the company and in your response if you can relate some of the initiatives of the organization of the company and relate them together in your response that will create a huge positive impact so these are all the various areas where many people fail in the data science interview so understand about all of them and ensure that in your next interview you don't make any of these mistakes that is it for now if you like what i am doing here please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you think this might be helpful to any of your friends please share it with them as well and see you in the next session bye until then